thank uh, Chairman Carper, and I want to thank the witnesses for uh, coming here today. It's nice to see my former colleague, Jim Matheson. We, I think we came into the Congress together in, yeah. in, yeah, in 2000, and so it's nice to see you, and welcome, welcome to the committee. Um, now, as much as ever, Senator, promoting- Senator uh, 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 Jim Matheson is a gift that keeps on giving. My chief of staff used to work for him. So. <laughs> it's a small world. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. Now, as much as ever, promoting America's energy security is utmost importance. National security is energy security. Not only can the U.S. lead the way on energy development, we can do it responsibly with lower emissions. U.S. greenhouse gas emissions have steadily dis- decreased, thanks to primarily to the shale revolution and Americans' ingenuity. But to pave the way for another American energy revolution, we need to take concrete steps to look at this administration's policies that are holding American energy producers back here at home to benefit, to the benefit of hostile regimes with appalling environmental track records. More specifically, facilitating America's um, uh, excuse me, facilitating additional American energy production will allow us to better assist our allies as they move away from Russian energy sources. Action to reverse the Biden administration regulatory policies will help us combat rising energy prices, ensuring Americans can fill up their gas tanks and keep their homes warm now and in the future. Over the last year, we've seen an unfortunate pattern from this administration. The administration policies have strained supplies increased prices for hardworking families, limited and delayed projects, chilled investments that could yield more production, and are threatening the affordability, reliability, and new capacity of our nation's energy supply. As a candidate, President Biden promised to drop all drilling on federal lands. And on day one in office, the administration stopped all new oil and gas leasing on federal lands and killed the Keystone XL pipeline Um, And they have also backed many challenges to energy projects in court. One of these, on top of these actions, activist judges have halted construction of necessary energy projects across this country, like the Mountain Valley Pipeline in the state of West Virginia or the region. As a result, the regular gas price in the United States has climbed to more than $4 per gallon. Diesel's over $5 per gallon. And in some parts of our country, I think I saw in California, it's well over $5 up to $6 per gallon. These are the highest recorded average gas prices our country has ever seen, topping even the run-up in 2008. Now the administration is trying to claim, and I think I heard a little bit of this in your statement, that rising gasoline, oil, and natural gas prices is caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But prices were skyrocketing well before this. For example, the week that President Biden took office, the average price of gas was $2.38 per gallon. It rose to $3.53 per gallon, an increase of $1.15 per gallon, by February 21, 2022, the date of the last report before Putin invaded Ukraine. The most recent report recorded prices at $4.24 per gallon, up an additional 71 cents. So the majority of the price increase took place before the invasion. Similarly, natural gas and other commodity prices have skyrocketed, the price of natural gas in uh, New England averaged more than $20, $20 per million BTU in January, spiking to almost 30 for several days due to a lack of pipelines in the region or the equivalent of $180 per barrel of oil. At the same time, natural gas in my region was about $5 uh, per, BT, per million BTU. In 2021, home electricity bills rose at their fi- fastest rate since 2008, yet EPA is working toward a menu of new regulations targeting power plants that will make the problem worse. This is on top of the record inflation that is impacting West Virginia families who are now paying higher grocery bills, higher gas prices, and facing higher costs to heat and cool their homes, leaving hardworking Americans struggling to balance higher costs in all areas of their lives. That's what we hear when we go home every, every day. So President Biden's attack on the industry uh, are, are having their unintended are having an intended effect. He just doesn't like the way it materially impacts voters and taxpayers. If we're serious about domestic energy security, along with reducing emissions, we need to get back to policies that encourage and utilize American production and innovation. We need to reduce unnecessarily roadblocks to vital energy projects and infrastructure. We need an all of the above energy strategy that it does include electric vehicles, renewables 
and, uh, and all of the above hydrogen development which we see. It is hard to deliver on American energy security if permitting complexities continue to pass to pose an unsurmountable challenge. Regulatory and permitting uncertainty is essential for building infrastructure to achieve our goals of energy security. Whether that's a natural gas pipeline, transmission capacity for solar or wind, or lithium mining. For too long, states and project sponsors have been stuck in a regulatory purgatory seeking endless approvals from up to 13 federal agencies. Additionally, dozens of state and local approvals have typically required before construction. I don't know how we get to energy security and build out clean energy if a labyrinth per permitting process chills investment in potential new products, uh, projects. While we are focused on Russia, Congress can do more to support energy security domestically by expanding our production of our own resources here. We need to support American energy solutions, including coal, nuclear, and oil and gas, as well as critical min minerals essential to making those EVs that we wish in our future and other projects. These are important to our energy security and critically important to energy affordability. So some of the ways we can accomplish this is providing regulatory certainty by codifying actions that the Trump administration took to provide certainty under the Clean Water Act. We can expedite permitting and review processes by codifying one federal decision, which is in the bipartisan infrastructure package for transportation, providing lit uh, litigation certainty and allowing federal agencies to use one another's categorical exclusions, and limit red tape for gasoline and other types of fuels by preventing regulations and new fees that will increase the price of our energy. If the administration won't take action, the Congress needs to. I look forward to hearing what the witnesses have to say to bolster our energy security, encouraging uh, American investment while moving forward on uh, the environmental issues that we know are so very important. Thank you very much.